This is the North Georgia Life Podcast. Embrace life where you live. Welcome to the North Georgia Life Podcast. Jake, your host. Today's episode is with Georgia Mountain Falconry. So this is an episode that uh, I've been trying to schedule for, I don't know, three, four months, I think. Um, and just between logistics and travel schedules, uh, it didn't didn't work out. So, and honestly, real estate has been so stinking busy that it's taken me about twice as long to get to the editing process of this episode as it normally does. So I apologize for that. But I think this is going to be one of these things that you've got to put on your radar uh, for where they're going to be and, and actually come experience this for yourself because there's there's genuinely nothing else quite like this and we have it right here in our backyard in the north georgia region so i uh, hope you enjoy you know how to find us online facebook instagram north georgia life podcast north georgia life podcast at gmail.com we are on pretty much every platform that you would listen to music or podcasts on your phone so you can check us out wherever you're listening to those things and as we are getting into the the fall and the fourth quarter of a really, really difficult year, I'm recording this actually the day before the election, if you just need someone to talk to, <laughs> if you just need a little encouragement with life in general, if it's been a really difficult year in business, uh, wherever you're at with something in that realm, and you just, I mean, you just got to have somebody to talk to, Give me, shoot me an email, happy to have a phone call, and, um, and hopefully uh, a little pick-me-up session. Uh, hey, if you are, <laughs> I've had this conversation with multiple people in like the last month that uh, they are uh, p- clients of mine that are looking to sell their homes in the, in the first quarter, beginning of the second quarter. There has literally never been a better time than right now to sell your house <clears throat> or your land or wherever you're, whatever, whatever you own uh, because of where the inventory is and the interest rates. So uh, whether you reach out to me or your, your own real estate agent or whoever, just my little you know preemptive Christmas gift to you, uh, this is the time to sell property because the this is just capitalism at its finest. Supply and demand is highly leveraged in the favor of the seller right now, uh, and it's a really good time considering where the interest rates are and how much of a demand we have for the North Georgia region. So. Um, not a plug for myself, but you know, not trying to steal anybody's relationship in their in the re- their own real estate world. Uh, but if you if you just want to have a conversation, you can always reach out to me and pick my brain on that. So, with that, we'll get started with Georgia Mountain Falconry. Welcome to the North Georgia Life Podcast. Today's episode is going to be probably one of the most fascinating, uh, unless you're a ground squirrel, one of the most fascinating episodes that we have done yet. And the reason ground squirrels are not going to uh, like it so much is we are with Georgia Mountain Falconry, which is an operation here in our North Georgia region that specializes in something that is both kind of a, a an old world ancient sport. Uh, and, and an art form, and it's uh, being used as an educational tool for a lot of our, our young people and, 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 frankly, people like me that are old and just don't know a whole lot about it. But we are here with Buster Brown. Buster, thanks for your time. Uh, we are actually, if we got a little wind noise, we're actually at the top of Brasstown Ball today because you've got a, a show, an exhibit here today. So uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for inviting me, Jake. I really appreciate it. Let's start with where, where's Buster from? I'm Atlanta, born and raised. Uh, actually, grew up in Smyrna. Uh, graduated from Wills High School way back. Okay. Uh, it's now now merged with Campbell, which was our big rivals at the time. But yeah, went to Campbell High School. I mean, to Wills High School. Graduated in 1969. Uh, went from there to Georgia Southern. Graduated from Georgia Southern, and from there to teaching and coaching. Okay. And in the in the years that you were not doing the, the the falconry was there any anything that you were like this was even on your radar not really coaching tends to uh, take up all your time so uh that's really what i focused on for my oh for at least 30 of the 40 years of my career i got into into falconry about 10 years before i retired i gotcha okay and uh take us through how did 
How did you get the falconry bug? Georgia Mountain Falconry has been um, in existence for probably since around 2010. I, I started uh, the little uh, logo company about the time I left um, Lakeview Academy in Gainesville and, mm -hmm. and became the women's basketball coach at Truett McConnell in 2011. Okay. Uh, that's also a time that, that uh, one of the great things about being at Truett is that's when we're, they were starting the four-year college program there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to teach the first, uh, as, as much as we know, the first four-credit uh, falconry course in the U.S. Wow. And uh, so we did that in 2011, which, which made the, the whole coaching and, and falconry fun at the same time. Yeah, yeah, that's really unique. That was the first one? Yeah, first one. First time ever. And, um, you know, it was one of those things that had to get licensed from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as well as Georgia. And and invited a lot of my friends to come up and be involved in the actual teaching of the course so it was really mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of fun uh and you were you were sharing with me before we started you got the the falconry uh, bug actually at a was it a, a hunting show a hunting show yeah the old atlanta buckarama which is now no longer in existence uh now they do it georgia wildlife federation sponsors it and they now do it in in uh in macon only or uh, in perry only but started there, went to uh, you know went to the hunting show. Decided I was ready to get back into hunting and and uh, after being involved in coaching so long, and walked around the corner of the booth there, and there's five guys with birds on their gloves. That, That'll get your attention when you yeah, turn the really, corner. It really did, and uh, one of those guys happened to live about five miles from me in Marietta, became my mentor in the sport, and and uh, I pretty much bugged him forever after that. <laughs> So what uh, what kind of birds were those? Do you remember? A, a little bit of everything. Okay. Uh, they had red-tailed hawks on the glove. They had falcons on the glove of various kinds. Um, even one guy had a an occipiter or goshawk on the glove. So it was it was hmm. a it, it was a real interesting time. And and I spent a, a few hours there just uh, asking those guys lots of questions and yeah. finding out about it. And then how long from from that uh, Buckarama show? to when you got your first bird? Actually a year. Um, I went hunting, training, uh, any trapping, anything uh, the guys were doing in that year before I got my license. I wanted to really find out what it was all about before I before I did it. And uh, so about a year later, I trapped my first bird in September and started hunting the following season. Okay. Uh, so let's get into uh, what all you do. You obviously a, a big part of what you do is uh, exhibits uh, days like today at Brasstown, where you're. Uh, it's a public event. You do. Uh, there's an educational, uh, big educational component, which I think probably yields itself naturally to you as a as a teacher, a former teacher. What all What all do you do? Um, you've got the ability to do private events for people if they've got. Uh, this is. I, I was thinking about on the way here. For people who uh, are really in, you know, in a management role and looking for something to do that's uh, that's team building, that's a year-end kind of breakout team meeting kind of thing, just something that will uh, give a little uh, extra energy into a, a very uh, stressful year for a lot of people in business, um, this would be a really cool thing to, to integrate into a day or a half-day training orientation for, for your people. So, Okay. Um Primarily, we're a falconry education, raptor education company. Everything we do is about kind of sharing our, our passion with others. Um, as far as education is concerned, we do what is called a raptor encounter, where we, we meet privately. Typically, we meet people at Montalucci Vineyards in Bologna, uh -huh. which is not too far from where I live. And <clears throat> we bring six or seven hawks, falcons, and owls, and people are allowed or are, are able to uh, get up close and personal with the birds. They handle some. They have a Q and A session with three licensed falconers, and mm. they get to call a hawk to the glove, which is pretty cool. That's stuff. pretty cool. Um, then we also do, of course, group things. Uh, today at Brass Town Ball, we're doing a, what we call a meet and greet. We're just going to be holding birds and answering questions, and people come up and let them take pictures and mm -hmm. so forth. We do schools and churches and camps and. Uh, those kinds of things as far as group sessions concerned it hasn't happened so much in the last six months with uh, with our current situation uh, but probably the most unique thing we do is we actually take people on a falconry experience what that means is 
they actually go with us and they get to watch while the raptors do what they do in the wild and that is pursue their prey wow so it's um it's it's a form it's hunting at, at its very purest mm -hmm. um and if you've never seen it it is it is something to, to behold if you can imagine here in in the southeastern united states primarily we uh, you'll see most falconers hunt squirrels or red-tail hawks because we have lots of squirrels and red tails yeah. are red tails are everywhere but uh if you can imagine a squirrel trying to get away from a hawk knowing if he doesn't get away he's going to he's going to be gone mm -hmm. so they can do they can do a, a lot of amazing things and a red tail hawk a hungry red tail hawk is a very dangerous predator mm. uh it really literally goes after anything that moves mm. and uh it's it's a lot of fun to watch for for people who and i i'm I should have looked this up so I knew the the correct uh, part of the eye. I remember years ago uh, reading, uh, I can't remember exactly what um, I was doing at the time that I was looking this up, but it was something relative to these these raptor birds and their ability to see very well straight out ahead of them and down at the ground simultaneously. What am I trying to remember? Well, the, the vision, their vision, I've heard everything from... You know, the experts say everything from three times our sight to up to ten times our sight. Mm -hmm. um, one, of the, one of the things that they really uh, are able to do that's amazing is any type of movement from a long way off is, is uh, an invitation for them to attack. Mm. Um, a squirrel twitches his nose at 200 yards, a hawk's going to see it. Really, um, you know, I've, one of the one of the best ways I've heard anybody um, kind of explain the vision of a, a hawk is if they could read, they'd read a newspaper at a hundred yards. <laughs> so it's, it's one of those things where they see in detail and, and they see minute movements. Kind of uh, taking a step back for for somebody who's maybe in that uh, that. You know, I don't want to say second career, but uh, maybe they were in the military. They were a teacher. You know, they they quote put their time in. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, it's different different kind of suffering in those environments. <laughs> um, but uh, but something that they they may want to pursue that's maybe an interest like you that you didn't really know you had that would become a you know a life passion after teaching. Any words of wisdom? Uh, just what's kind of been a good guide for you in, in pursuing this? One of the great things about falconry is, you know, it, it is a hunting sport. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people go to an Auburn football game, for example, and you see the eagle fly before the game. It's a, it's to me, it's one of the most amazing pregame events there is. But it's not falconry. Mm -hmm. Falconry is actually hunting with the bird. But one of the great things about it is. There are many falconers who get into the sport. They're not hunters. They're mm. just they love raptors or they love being, you know, out in the woods. And this day and time, it's the better. The more you can get out there, the better. Mm -hmm. But, but it, it's it really is involves a lot of different lifestyles, a lot of different people. I mean, uh, I know a an orthopedic surgeon who's a, a falconer. Mm. I know a pastor who's a falconer. Um, they're they're just different. They come from different walks of life. Mm -hmm. um, but if you love raptors and you love being in the woods, it's yeah. a great place to do. Any particular uh, best memory that you have from from doing this? Wow, uh, that, that, that would be hard to replace one. I, I guess really the most the most fun thing about it is, um, you know, unlike a, a deer hunter who gets into the woods in the day in in the darkness and gets up in a climbing tree stand and waits for the sun to come up. Mm -hmm. Falconry, you don't have to do any of that. Um, you don't have to be quiet. You don't have to wear camo. Um, it, it's, in fact, uh, you can have a handful of people out there and sometimes the more the merrier. Um, it, and it's just the fun part of being with others who enjoy doing what you do. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it, makes it makes it a lot of fun. Um, I think primarily uh, being with friends who I enjoy hunting with, who are whose birds are ready to go, and and we we kind of all give each other a hard time. You know how uh, it's it's not really a a competition, but it is. Yeah. Uh, and uh, give your birds a pep talk. It, yeah, <laughs> Free it's game. Always, it's always you know if, if you you put your bird up and you don't catch something in the first five minutes, you get blistered by your your buddies. You know. And, <laughs> 
say, well, I, you know, it's, it's whoever trained the bird. It's, it's, it, it's their problem. Right, <laughs> so right. It's, it's a lot of fun just to be involved with people that, um, that enjoy doing the same thing you do. And at the same time, falconry is very private. You can, mm -hmm. being out in the woods, and we tell, we tell people it's hiking with entertainment. <laughs> uh, or, or extreme bird watching, if you will. Um, you're moving all the time, so there's some there's some good exercise involved. Um, when you're squirrel hawking, it's you're in the woods and, and there's no no trails involved. You're mm -hmm. you're going through the woods and and the bird, if you're doing like you're supposed to, the bird is following you through the trees. Wow! And all you're doing is trying to make something move. Hmm. And when that happens, we're all spectators. Wow! That's that's I. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Other than just being able to be outside, what's one of your favorite parts of, of doing this? Just the the fact that I'm partnering with a wild animal. Mm. Um, there's, it's hard to think of anything else that you can do like that. Mm -hmm. um, this, this bird, the first time you think you have a pet is when you get hurt mm. because um, a, a red-tailed hawk, for example, is I think they just soon hold us down and eat us as they would <laughs> hunt with us. But when they realize that we're out there to help them, there is a partnership, there is a bond, and and that's hard to beat. Yep. How, just a, ignorance question here. Yeah, I've trained dogs, but I can put a dog in a fence and train it, or in my house. How do you train something that can fly away from well, it's, you? It's, it's very similar. Um, it's positive reinforcement. Uh, it's all about food. It's all about weight management. The That raptor is not going to come back to you because it loves you like a dog. Mm -hmm. There's no emotional attachment. Um, so it's like a cat. Our most, yes, <laughs> that's very true. Our, our, our um, most important piece of equipment is scales because we're going to weigh our birds daily during the hunting season and we have a season just like gun hunters do mm. uh, and we know what our range of flight is mm -hmm. what i mean by that is uh, the weight where we're pretty sure that bird is hungry and is going to hunt and come back to us hmm. um, if you if you put the bird up in what we call a fat condition it certainly doesn't look fat but if it's if it's overweight you risk losing the bird. Mm. Uh, and not only that, it may not even hunt. It's just, it doesn't need you. Mm -hmm. It's not hungry. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that makes it, that also makes it fun though. Uh, you know, you never know when you put your bird up, is that bird going to come back to you at the end? Most of the time you have a pretty good idea, mm -hmm. but that bird chooses to and, uh, or not to. And uh, it's part of what makes the sport great. Hmm. So in all of the places you go around uh, the area here, are there any places that you particularly uh, love to go back to, uh, your favorite places, and do you have restaurants close to by that you, <laughs> you, you like to go to? Well, we typically when we take people on a hunting experience, a uh, falconry experience, we typically meet people for breakfast in the Cleveland, Dahlonega area, mm -hmm. Gainesville, that area. and. Uh, either breakfast or lunch and we we go to the woods after that uh, one of the great things about where I live in Northeast Georgia is uh, I have people who are friends who are allowing me to hunt on their property mm -hmm. I don't have all the property myself that I need to, to hunt on. over over the next five ten years um, anything you'd like to see expand grow um, do more of uh, other than you know the last six months of COVID <laughs> <laughs> well, I would obviously I would love to be able to do this for a number of more years as long as I can move around. Mm -hmm. I'll be able to do that. But uh, you know, it's I, I'm 69 years old, so it, uh, my time's running out. Uh, but one of the things that I, I guess a um, a real goal for me is I just received my uh, my permit from the state. Uh, to possibly trap a golden eagle for falconry. Oh wow! Just received it yesterday from the state of Utah. Would love to finish off my falconry with to be able to do it with a golden eagle mm -hmm. in the southeast. Aren't many people who do it. Um, and uh, but it's to me, it's the ultimate falconry bird. You'll see those birds taking down deer and foxes and wow. things like that. Wow! Uh, that we probably wouldn't do the, that kind of hunting in Georgia.
so a question I like to do before we end every episode is called lightning round and today's lightning round I know this is probably too soon for Atlanta Falcons fans but uh, do you think if if uh, Arthur Blank brought in a Falcon to fly over maybe pregame halftime at, at both that the Falcons could possibly get better well actually, <laughs> or is it without hope actually um, years ago uh, the Falcons did fly, fly a Falcon uh, before the games at the Georgia Dome who flew a uh, Atlanta Falcon uh, before the games. Hmm. And uh, in fact, I was able to be there a few times to watch him train during that time. But like that and, and the, uh, in the Hawks games, things like that, the, the live animal situation kind of they took a, took that away or stopped stopped doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish they'd continue to do it. Like yeah. I said, the the Auburn game with the Eagle flying before the game is one of the great spectacles of sport, if you ask me. Mm-hmm. So it, it, yeah, it's hard to get worse. <laughs> um, okay, how do people find out more about you, your organization, where you're going to be, um, do private events, things like that? GeorgiaMountainFalconry.com uh, and the Georgia Mountain Falconry Facebook page. Okay. You can find out everything, pretty much everything that we do. We we try to put uh, photos of people who are involved in our raptor encounters. And we have probably the biggest thing we do educationally twice a year now, we do the uh, Apprentice Academy. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, it's held typically in the Helen area. We've had it, had it at Unicoi Lodge the past couple of times. It's coming January 20, 2021, we're gonna be at the Helen uh, Holiday Inn Express okay. Suites. And uh, it's a, it is a two and a half day workshop to prepare the potential falconer for the Georgia exam mm-hmm. and to get them started in the, in the right way for falconer. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not for everybody, but if you're interested in becoming a falconer, it'd be the place to go. Um, thanks for your time and uh, hope you have a great turnout today. It's a beautiful day. Thank you, Jake. This is the North Georgia Life Podcast. Embrace life where you live.